Welcome back to General Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the next few videos, we're going to be doing some basic calculations using the ideal gas law that you may see in a general chemistry course. So let's do the first example in this video. So we've got 5.30 moles of an ideal gas which exists at a pressure of 3.00 atmospheres at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius and we want to calculate the volume of this ideal gas. So first of all what is the ideal gas equation? We have it written right here. This is the most common form of it that you would see in general chemistry PV equals nRT where P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles of the gas, R is the ideal gas constant, and T is the temperature. Um, the thing you need to remember about this temperature is it needs to be in Kelvin. So we'll eventually have to convert this to Kelvin. So a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this is our ideal gas constant. This is either something you would need to memorize, which you can do, or you can be given these uh, gas constants in a table. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, when you have an ideal gas law problem, you will typically know four of the five variables in this equation, the ideal gas law. Now, R is not really a variable, but I'm just calling that for it a variable for simplicity purposes. So you'll know four of these five things. So let's think about the four that we know based on the information given in this problem. We obviously know R because R is the ideal gas constant. We can either memorize that or we can look at it in a table of values, which I have here at the bottom. We'll eventually use one of these. Let's see, we know the number of moles, N, that was given as 5.3 moles, that's two of them. We know the pressure, the pressure is given as three atmospheres, that's three. And then we also know the temperature, 35 degrees Celsius. So that gives us four of the five variables. We can then solve for the volume. But the first thing we actually have to do is we have to first convert this temperature unit into Kelvin. So really when you do any of the, these gas law type of problems, you cannot use degrees Celsius in the calculation. This first has to be converted to Kelvin. So I'm going to do that over here. So my temperature is given as 35 degrees Celsius. I want to find the Kelvin temperature. So all I do is I take the 35 that I'm given, and I'm always going to add this number, 273.15. Adding that to a degree Celsius is the conversion to Kelvin. Sometimes you'll see it just written as 273 even. That's fine. But if I add it with the 0.15, I get... 308.15 Kelvin. This is the temperature I'm going to use in my calculations when I start plugging in numbers. So at this point, I've got the number of moles, the number of atmospheres, and the temperature in Kelvin. Now I need to select the gas constant I want to use. Here's a table of the gas constants R. They're all technically the same value, except for the units are going to be different, so the numbers are therefore different. The ones on the right side here you will seldom ever use, so we're going to skip these. The most common ones are usually going to be the first four on here. And the, the exact gas constant that you want to use is the one typically that has the units that match up with the pressure in the problem. In our problem, our pressure is in atmospheres. So I'm going to pick the gas constant that has units of atmospheres. Now I could use, based on that, either the second one here or the third one. Out of these two, the best one to use is normally the second one right here. So 0.082057 liter atmospheres per Kelvin per mole. I'm going to use that because it has these atmosphere units. That's the most common one. So that'll be the R I use. Now we can more or less just plug in numbers and we'll see what our answer is. So remember, we're solving for volume because that's the variable we don't know. So I'm going to plug in numbers. For our pressure, P is 3.00 atmospheres times volume, because volume we don't know, equals our N is 5.30 moles times our R. Again, I'm selecting purposely this 0 0.008206 and then times the temperature in Kelvin, 308.15 Kelvin. All right, so now I've input all of my variables that I know. Now I can solve for volume. Algebraically, the way I'd solve for volume is divide both sides by 3.00 atmospheres. So that's what I'm going to do. So down here I've shown you, you divide both sides by 3.00 atmospheres. That cancels all this over here. Then this side is divided by 3.00 atmospheres. So that leaves on the left side we have volume equals 5.30 moles times our gas constant, 
8206 liter atmospheres per Kelvin per mole, times the temperature 308.15 Kelvin, and then divide by the pressure 3.00 atmospheres. And when I actually compute this quotient, so dividing all the numbers, I get 44.7. Now, how do I know that the units are liters? Well, that has to do with the gas constant that we selected. This particular one had units of liter atmospheres per Kelvin per mole. So what you can do to show that the units are liters to help you is you can uh, cancel units. So for example, the atmosphere here in the R, the gas constant, cancel with the atmosphere here in the denominator. So atmospheres cancel out. That's the reason I chose that particular gas constant. The moles here, the moles from N and the moles in the denominator of the R units, those cancel. And then also the Kelvin, these cancel. Okay, And so if you were to cancel those, all you would have remaining are just the liter units. And so the answer to this question, what's the volume of this ideal gas, it's going to be 44.7 liters. Okay, so hopefully this calculation made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to do a second example of an ideal gas law calculation in the next video. Thank you.